We are in the highlands of Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia. This beautiful and ancient country lies between two great mountain ranges, the Tansan Mountains to the north and the Pamir mountain range to the south. From these glacial mountain tops come pouring down waterfalls, white rapids, and thunderous rivers of the most pure and sweet waters. Waters rush down to the valleys below to grow fields of flowers and tender grass to feed the many herds of animals. In turn, these animals give them all that they need to have a good life, food, shelter, clothing, craft, and trade. We came to Kyrgyzstan to experience how it is to live in New York and to learn about the people who live in it. From a distance, most yurts look alike. This village of Transients is near the lake Isikul. Ruins of an ancient and advanced city existing 2,500 years ago lay in the bottom of this lake. Though of similar size and shape, the whiteness of the yurt cover means higher status and wealth. Ah, finally, the perfect yurt. A Kyrgyz invitation to enter their yurts is most welcoming. As you stand there by the door, the first thing you see on the floor is that beam of light dancing around the room, telling time. During warm weather, the roof is uncovered, providing you with a view of the stars and the moon at night and the bright blue skies in the daytime. Welcome to the house of the nomads, living within a circle, looking up into a circle of light, round with no corners, exposed with nothing to hide. All within are equal, all feel included, protected. A one-room affair, but oh, what a room it is. A room beautiful enough for a queen, or a pasha with a Shahrazad by his feet. A room to give rest to the traders and travelers. To hold a marriage council. To raise a family of six. To practice a trade. Open up a restaurant or a beach resort a kurut factory, a guest room. This is the yurt of the famous Queen of the South, Karmanjan Datka and Alambek Datka. She was a wise and benevolent ruler who sacrificed her youngest and favorite son in exchange to a peaceable coexistence with the Russian colonizers. Her reed wall tells of the history of her great ancestors, the Mongols, of soldiers and traders and prophets and adventurers. They bore weapons like these. These are some of the clothes of her descendants. High up in the Alai Mountains, we were fortunate to experience the famous Kyrgyz hospitality. A group picture before the two yurts, the preparation of the beddings for the night, our most generous and gracious host. These tradesmen specialize on making of the crown of which the yurt is built upon. From this tree, the branches are shaved and bent to make the roof. Reed woven with wool will make for a good wall. A yurt being set up, first the bones and then the skin. 
The setup procedure has always been the same as it ever was, with a little help from our friends. Kyrgyz women's hands are always busy, making everything inside a yurt as beautiful as they can. Milking of the mare to make kumis. Fermented, it is the most potent health drink. We were invited inside the yurt for tea, kumis, kurut, and the cream they made that morning. As guests of a Kyrgyz home, we were always seated farthest away from the door. As a Kyrgyz host, the safety and well-being of a guest is almost a sacred duty. Beautiful and free-spirited children are the most precious treasure of any Kyrgyz home, especially when grandma's around. They swaddle the babies for better sleep. Born in a yurt, buried in a yurt. traditional yurt not the real one but the design and everything is all Kyrgyz we're in Karakol right now sleeping on a farm and maybe do some horse riding tomorrow so it's gonna be fun So off we go to greener pastures. And it's time to move on. They dismantle the yard. Я помню все, 